to another, it's not like Friday afternoon, but to another one of our lives. Oops, that didn't work. We'll just wait for a few people to jump on. As always, if you're re-watching this, let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions at all, let us know. And if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. It just tells YouTube that you like what you see. Um, all right, so I'm actually going to get started. I know there's nobody on. Hopefully you guys will all watch it back. Um, but today we're working on this table. So I brought this piece at an auction a few weeks ago and I like auctions because I can go beforehand, I can look at pieces um, and anybody who's buying pieces from auctions, I highly recommend that you take advantage of their viewing days and go in and have a look at the pieces um, and really get a good idea of the quality, etc., um, and the condition of the piece as well. Um, now, I normally take on pieces that are a lot worth for wear that really aren't, most people don't want them, um, that are just well beyond using as is. Um, and this was one of them, except when I purchased it, I knew the top needed sanding. Um, it was it was flaking, it wasn't in good condition. However, I didn't know at the time that one of these legs, they had um, curved legs that come out with a little um, brass foot on it. I didn't realize that one of them was completely missing that part of the leg. So, um, me being me, did try to fix it. And I actually cut all the legs down to the same size to see whether or not the table was stable. I didn't pay a lot for this piece, so it didn't matter if it wasn't stable. Oh, sorry, it mattered if it was stable. It didn't matter if it didn't work because I knew that I could do other things with it. And I love these tables because I can do other things with them. So if, they're no, if the legs are no good, if something about it's no good, I can pull them apart, which is what we're gonna to do today. Um, and I think this is a really nice piece to show you on. So, I trimmed all the legs. I'll bring it closer so you can see what we've done. So we've cut the legs down. I've sanded them a little bit to give them a little bit more stability. Unfortunately, and to be honest, I think even with the full legs on them, before I cut it down, it wasn't that stable. Um, but unfortunately, now, pop your cup of coffee on and the whole table is going to go over, which nobody wants. Um, so the table, the usability, it's not there. Uh, I have two options. I, well, I have three options. My first instinct was to throw it in the bin because I'd had enough of it already. The second option is getting whole new legs cut. Um, now, if I had done that with just the one leg that was originally damaged and not, and not cut down the other two, would have been an okay option. But... It, yeah, I didn't want to do that, so I didn't do it. But it's definitely an option. Um, you can go to a local men's shed if you don't have the skills or the time you, um, yourself. Go to a local men's shed and they can often do it for you. And they can, these legs unscrew it as you'll see in a minute. And they can do that for you. So that's always an option as well. Um, but my third option today is deconstructing the table and upcycling it. So that it's not going to waste. We're still using it. It's still a usable piece, we're just changing how we use it. So it's got some really nice details. It's got this beautiful little like triangle bit here. It's got these absolutely stunning. I love turn detail, I think it's beautiful. Um, so it's got this really nice detail and then of course it's got this really big top and it's, there's me for comparison. It's quite a large top, which I really, really like. Um, and it also appears to be cedar, which is gorgeous. I love cedar, so I'm really, really happy with that. Um, just if you are sanding these, just be aware, sometimes they are actually a veneer. Uh, this one does not appear to be, thank goodness, but sometimes they can be a veneer as well. So just go easy if you ever do sand one. Um, normally, or not normally, but sometimes these can also have a leather top on them as well. If you can, um, just hydrate and replenish that leather with some wax. Um, but if the leather's no good, you can always pull it off and um, either put some wallpaper down, paint it, or replace the leather. Um, so, 
we're going to pull it apart and we're going to use it as a few different things um, which we're going to have some fun with today. So the legs, uh, I'm actually going to leave the legs on there and I'm hoping that this whole top bit just comes off these. That's the plan. First though, before we do that, we're going to take this top bit off. So just unscrews. I love these pieces because of how they're put together. They're nearly always just screwed in and they're super simple to pull apart. Two. Um, I always keep these old style screws um, because I often have pieces where that's the best screw for the piece. Um, it fits into the holes, etc. Or like I get a piece like this and it's missing a screw or two. So I always keep them. I have a little stash. Of course, you can use new ones, but these are just as good. And why throw them out when you just don't need to? All right, so I'm hoping now, I haven't pulled this part off. <laughs> I'm hoping now that I've unscrewed, oh, okay. <laughs> now that I've unscrewed it, that I can just pull it off like that. Now, that's a bit cute. I actually really like it as a plant stand. My original plan was to pull this top bit off pull these off and turn them into candlesticks, um, and then possibly pull them off the base as well. But now that I'm looking at it, it's nice and stable without the big top. Let me grab a little pot. Now I'm looking at it, I really, really like it. Ta-da! All right, so I really, really like that. Now, on the top of it, we have got so these I was hoping were screwed in, but they're not. They're actually dowed in. Um, and then they've been glued with a lot of glue. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to pull those couple of staples out. And then I'm going to fill all of these. I'm actually going to use some builder's bog, which you can get from Bunnings. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, you can get from Bunnings. It's just better for these really, really deep um, dip deep, what are we calling them? Holes? Holes. Let's call them a hole. Um, it will just fill in. It's rock hard. And then once it's fully dry, I can just give that a really good sand and it will be nice and smooth. Then I can just paint over it and you would never know that they were there. So that's my new plan with this. I like that plan. I'm very, I really, really like this piece. I think it's quite cute. Um, and with a pot with a nice big, um, Maybe a fern or something in it? I don't know. Maybe I need to go shopping and find a plant. <laughs> I can't keep plants alive, so it's probably not a good idea, but you never know. All right, so here's our top. So this is the piece that we're going to start on today. So our back, nice and clean. We've got the original sticker. We're just going to give these a little bit of a sand down. They're a bit rough, more just to make sure nobody hurts their fingers. Now the front, you can see I've sanded it pretty well there's a couple bits here that i haven't quite gotten but what we're going to do today is we're going to paint this rim this piece we are going to keep the timber so i'm going to paint it first and then i can clean that up later on i'm just going to grab my little triangle doodads to pick it up off the table okay so you can use whatever you want but these little triangle things are fantastic. I am going to be stocking them. I have some on the way. I just don't know when they're going to arrive. I have found a supplier for them. Um, I've sold them in the past and um, I use these all the time. So you just pop them underneath. They can clip together as well. And then it's just lifted up off the table to make your painting job a little bit easier. Now, the color that I've chosen for this is Purico's Harbour which is this beautiful, oh, <laughs> beautiful blue. Um, and I'm doing it in chalk finish today. You can use whatever you like. Oops. Okay, good. <laughs> Apparently my phone wasn't on the Wi-Fi and I just ran out of data. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, so you can use whatever you like, but I'm going to use chalk finish today. That's what I've got open. I'm going to be using my 38 mil paintbrush in the oval, which has got this really nice curve to it. And I chose 38 mil. I think it's a really good size and I like the curve of it to get into all those grooves. 
And to prep that bit now, it's already been cleaned. We're just gonna give it a quick sand. So I'm using Purico's wet and dry sanding sponges. And I'm gonna use the 80 grit. And let me, I'm just gonna drop the camera down a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Which is always helpful, isn't it? And we're just quickly going to do a light little sand. Oh, you can sort of see it. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up. Can you see that slight line? So the base has got like a pine board and it's been attached to the top. Whether or not this is a veneer, I'm pretty certain that it's not. It's got too much weight in it to be a veneer. Um, and that's quite a thin um, piece of ply. But, um, yeah, so they've put a cheaper wood on there as well. Obviously, to get a bit more depth to it, which looks really good. But yeah, just always be aware and vigilant when you're sanding as well. If you're unsure, always keep an eye on it. Now, I really, really like this, but I'm actually thinking as well, I might add some feet to it. Um, I've got heaps of timber knob knobs there. I might even use some of those, but I'm just thinking, let me see what I've got here. I don't have any timber ones, but this sort of style, I'm just thinking I could attach them to the bottom, obviously not that tall, um, but attach, I think four to the bottom, just lifts it up off the table a little bit as well, or I could do something more decorative as well. So I've got a few options there. I'm not gonna add handles to it. I don't feel like with this beautiful edging, I think handles would just pull away from it a bit much. So I think, oops, uh, we're going to do, I think we might just add some little feet, just a little bit, just to pick it up. And it also makes it easier if it is used as a tray as a serving tray as well. That way you can pick it up and put it down too. Make a brilliant cheese board actually coming up for Christmas. All right, so once you've got it all sanded, we're going to give it a quick wipe down and I'm just going to grab my spray bottle. So this has already been cleaned with our hot soapy water. But I'm just going to, it's quite dusty, so I'm just going to spray down my towel and my board a bit. Just make sure that I get all that dust off it before we paint. And this is a good time to show you that as well. Let me wipe this quickly and then we'll have a quick chat about the wood. Now, one of the most common questions that I get for timber is, how do we know what the timber's gonna look like when we seal it? So not adding stain, not adding any color, just want to know what your timber is going to look like when it's sealed. The easiest way to tell is wiping your raw timber down with a cloth. And that is going to bring out the true colour of the timber. So this is the colour that I would get. Look how dark and beautiful that is. That's the colour that I would get if I was to... Um, put hemp oil on it, put uh, wax on it. They might go a little bit darker initially, but eventually as they sort of do their thing, they would soften out and become that color that you see there. 
Um, and if I put a top coat on it, it would pretty much be that colour. The hemp oil and wax does darken, oops, a little bit further simply because they soak. Whereas the top coat really does just sit on top. Just wipe down my bench here. Get rid of some of that Ooh, dust. All right, so we're all done with our prep. Now I'm not going to, um, what was I saying? I'm not going to prime this. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not worried about bleed through. I'm using a darker color and I'm using chalk finish. If I was using silk finish, I would 100% go in with a primer. Going to help with your adhesion, going to help with your coverage. However, chalk finish, it's just not necessary. Chalk has all the beautiful chalks and minerals in it that helps with the adhesion. So, as always, give your jar a quick little shake. I actually used this earlier, so I has had a shake today. And, <clears throat> oh, if I can get it open. There we go. Oops. Look at that beautiful blue. This is actually one of my new favorite colors. I used it on a chest of drawers the other way for a, other day, rather for a client. Um, and it's just stunning. It's a really, really pretty vintage blue. And I think it goes quite well with the cedar as well. So loading up your brush, dip it in, wipe it off a couple of times. That just gets that paint into the center bristles and helps with your paint distribution as you're painting. And now all I'm gonna do is paint these edges. And we're just going to, I'm going easy, but like it's not a big deal if I get it on the timber because it will come off. Chalk finish is also significantly easier to sand off as well. Even add a little bit of water with your sandpaper when you're sanding and it just comes straight off um, before it's been sealed. Once it's been sealed, it's a different story. But very, very easy to get off your timber. And I always paint before I do any finishing on the timber. I get the timber to raw just because I don't like cleaning sanding dust off my, uh, off my paint. Um, but you can, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> that wasn't a very good tangent, was it? Um, I always paint, for, uh, no, sand first, then paint, then clean up any paint on my timber before I um, seal or finish the timber, however I'm fi finishing it. Uh, because it's much easier to clean paint off a raw timber then off a piece of timber that you've already finished. Um, you're just letting yourself in for a lot of work if, you're, if you've gotten paint on something that's already been finished, particularly if you've stained it as well. So I'm just getting the paint on there. Nice and simple, one coat all over to begin with right now. And then we're going to flip it over now I'm not too worried about brush strokes, etc. I'm just wanting to get the paint on there. I really, really love this color. Look how beautiful that is. I wanted to go a little bit lighter, but not so light that it really took away from um, the timber either. I didn't want to do white. I thought that was a bit White's a bit overdone, <laughs> to be honest, for me. Um, and it's a bit boring for me as well. So I really wanted a bit of warmth and I wanted to keep the vintage feel as well. Obviously this is an older piece. So I wanted to keep a little bit of that vintage as well. Now this beautiful sticker here is not going to just peel off because it's so old, it's just gonna fall off. Just gonna grab my sandpaper. Should have sanded it before, didn't think of it. And Just a little bit of water just to sort of control my dust more than anything. There we go. There we go. Oh, I keep 
keep touching the wet paint too. <laughs> I'm doing well today. All right, let's finish painting. So, sort of going around the edges. And this is my first coat, so it doesn't matter that I've touched it. I'll do two to three coats, probably two. Um, I find the harbour has really, really good coverage. So I think two should just about do it. Now this plant stand, I'm thinking I might do carbon, maybe a little bit of blue in it, maybe even some green. I'm thinking blue. And then, me thinking out loud, I really wanna do rust. I haven't done rust in ages. So I'm gonna use Pure Eco's rust finish on it and get it really vintagey, old. And then I might even find a pot to go with it. Obviously I am doing it to sell, although if I really love it, I'll keep it. Um, although I can't keep plants alive, so that probably won't happen. Um, I will rust it, do a matching pot, and then I think that will be quite nice. I'm actually really happy with that idea. I wasn't 100% sure about the candlesticks. They do sell for me, but not that well. So I'm not like biting Bit, jumping at the bit, I don't know what it is, jumping at the gate, is that the term? <laughs> to do more because they tend to just sit here a little while, which isn't a problem, but sometimes you just need pieces to sell as well, particularly when you've had a very expensive month like I have. Oh, and our Christmas stock has been ordered, all of it's ordered. So we're not really doing Christmas decor, etc. We've got some beautiful cards from the Nonsense Maker who are in Melbourne. Um, absolutely beautiful cards coming. Uh, I will be making some Christmas candles, which I'm really excited about. Um, our candles are doing so well here in the store. I really, really enjoy the process of making them as well. So I'm excited to do some Christmas candles. And we will also be doing an advent calendar this year, which is exciting. So I'm hoping to have that ready to go for pre-orders next week. And shipping, I think, the first or second week of November is the plan. So I'm just finalising the last few things. It's been finalised for a few months, but you know how things happen. Things are always changing, so I've just got to make sure everything's lined up and ready to go. Look at that, it looks so dark on that camera today, despite the light coming through the windows. There we go, how beautiful is that? All right, so that's it for today. A bit more basic than what I thought it was gonna be, but we've done it. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm actually going away for a couple of days. We're taking advantage of the last couple of days of school holidays and going to go and see my parents. So the store is closed Friday, tomorrow, and closed Saturday this week. I will be back next Tuesday. If you wanna get an online order in, you have maybe 10, 15 minutes. So if you wanna place an order and get it shipped today and not have to wait till next Tuesday, pop it in right now, thepainterbrush.com.au, and I will get that shipped out for you today. But once I leave the store, I'm not coming back. Um, I am ready for a holiday. I have not had one. <laughs> so I am out of here as soon as I can be today. But that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you who have shopped with us these school holidays. Um, I hope you've survived them. My house has been <laughs> quite a challenge this, this, uh, these school holidays. But the kids are getting there. Thank goodness school goes back on Monday. Um, apart from that, have a lovely weekend and I will see you all next week for our regular live on a Friday instead of a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Bye everyone. Ooh. Perhaps if I press the button.